In all the discussion about the recent violation of our gun rights, many of our other civil rights are being violated as well. Is that because we don't know what those rights are, or are we just missing the forest for the trees? We'll discuss that next on the Constitution Study. There's one thing you have to know wherever you make your stay. Came from a long through line of everyday Americans. Well, hello there, everyday Americans. Paul Engel here with the Constitution Study, where we read and study the Constitution, and most importantly, we teach the rising generation to be free. I'm glad you could join me today. As always, I'm going to ask you to head to the website, Constitution Study. Dot com that you can find out everything that we're doing here at the Constitution Study. I encourage you to sign up for the mailing list. I send out an update about once a month with what's been going on at the Constitution Study. It's also where you can get the videos or audios delivered direct to your inbox. It's also a good place to ask questions, get engaged, and find material that you can not only use to educate yourself, but you can share with others. So I encourage you to do that. And with that, let's talk a little bit about what I call about knowing our rights. Whether it's the news reports about the whoever's been arrested because they, they said something that somebody thought might be dangerous, or the reports of candidates talking about how they're going to take away our guns, confiscate our guns, uh, force us to turn in our guns. Everyone seems to be focused on the Second Amendment. And that's actually a good thing. There is a lot going on that violates the, second, the rights protected by the Second Amendment. But sometimes I think we miss the forest for the trees. You see, there are a lot of other of our rights that are being violated by both by current law and by these proposed practices that nobody seems to be talking about. So I want to take a little bit of time here and ponder these ideas. Why, uh, what are these other rights and, and why is it important? So let's take a look. Now, as I said, many of the laws we're talking about, many of the proposals being made on the campaign trail violate our right to keep and bear arms. It says the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. They are infringing on our rights. Therefore, they're illegal and basically should be ignored. But what about our other, those other rights? For example, uh, I recently wrote an article about a gentleman in Martha's Vineyard who had his, he lost his job. He was, uh, um, if not taken into custody, he was escorted by police to his home to have his firearms confiscated because of something he said in a diner, criticizing an, an officer, a resource officer in the local school. That got him his rights taken away. Now, that's not a First Amendment violation because Congress didn't make that law, and I discussed that in other videos, but it certainly was a violation of this man's rights under the Massachusetts Constitution to have freedom of speech and freedom of expression. What about our Fourth Amendment right to be secure in our persons, papers, properties, and effects? How secure is your stuff if the government can simply say, we don't want you to have that anymore, give it to us, or we will fine you, or we will arrest you? What about our Fifth Amendment rights for due process that says, you can't have your property taken or your liberties taken without due process of law. Due process meaning protecting the rights of all involved. What happened to that? What about our 14th Amendment right of equal protection? Why, if someone is um, considered dangerous, why are they only punished if they happen to own a firearm? Cannot a car be used as, as a dangerous weapon or a knife or a baseball bat or just their fists? You could even look at it and say, well, wait a second. You know, our, our Sixth Amendment protections against criminal cases, well, we're not being charged with a crime. We're being punished, but we're not being charged with a crime. We're considered guilty until proven innocent. Or what about the right of a suit to have a trial by jury? Those are being violated. These are effectively being civil suits, and we're not allowed to stand before a jury. See, there are a lot of other rights, and it bothers me that we end up so focused on the one right, we miss, again, the forest for the trees. Our rights are being routinely violated. And we seem to be more interested in the circus of focusing on, oh, it's the Second Amendment. Now, some people will dismiss that because, well, it's the Second Amendment, and those people are all crazy. But they never seem to think about what happens to your right of free speech if the government can say, if you say this, 
we're going to think you're dangerous and we're going to restrict your rights somehow. What happens to your right to be secure in your home and in your property if the government can simply say, we think you're dangerous, so we're going to take your stuff away? What happens to innocent until proven guilty if you're considered guilty until you're proven innocent? Now, if you follow these videos, I've had a couple of examples of where this is being abused, which is not a surprise. But why are we doing nothing about it? And why are we not talking about all of our rights that are being violated? We have an investment, a property in all of our rights, not just a couple. Now, will it change the mind of people who are so terrified of guns? The simple thought that somebody might own a gun means they're dangerous? No. But the job here at the Constitution Study, what we do, my calling in life, is to help everyday Americans understand their rights. As John Jay said, knowing their rights to perceive when they are violated. We should perceive when all of our rights are violated, not just one or two. That we be prepared to defend and assert them. And that starts with reading and studying the Constitution. That's where you get the idea of what our rights are, what the go federal government is allowed to do, what the restrictions are on the states, what the, and that extends down into the cities and towns. What is government's restrictions so that you know when your rights are being violated and you can say, wait a second, time out. This is a violation of not just my rights, but what about other people's rights? Because as I said here over and over again, if you're not willing to protect other people's rights, there'll be no one around to protect your rights. And we are very quickly getting to the point where there is nobody willing to protect their own rights. So here we are. We are so focused on, ooh, ooh, it's a gun, it's a gun. We are watching the rest of our rights being trampled, being trashed, being treated like toilet paper by those in political office and in many cases cheering them on how can we be the land of the free if you're not free to live your life the way you want without the government telling you how i'm not saying free to intimidate others i'm not saying free to infringe on their rights to live your life without harming other people without taking other people's stuff and being left alone we're not the land of the free. We're the land of as only as free as the government will let us. Because we won't take responsibility and go to our elected officials and say, no, this is not legal. This is not allowed. I just got quoted in an article at the bipartisan press talking about Andrew Yang and his universal basic income and how, regardless of whether you think it's a good idea or, or not, it's illegal. Why? Because Congress doesn't have the authority to collect taxes for that purpose. Your right to be secure, to not have your stuff taken by a government for any reason they want, is being violated. And we don't talk about that. So what do you think? Is it time for us to take our heads out of the blinders of the Second Amendment and start looking at the First, the Fourth, the Fifth, the Sixth, the Seventh, the 14th, how about the 10th? Is it time to start looking at our rights as not just this, this one little thing we wanna focus on today and actually look at what government is doing and how they're violating your rights left, right, and center? Because if we won't take the time to learn what our rights are, how will we ever know when they're being violated? And if we don't know when they're violated, how can we defend them? How can you assert a right you don't even know you have? So join me. Come to the Constitution study. Start learning what your rights are. Read and study the Constitution. Learn about your rights. Learn how to defend them. Learn how to assert them. And do so in a way that doesn't violate the rights of somebody else. So I hope you found this interesting. I hope, it, again, I'm, I always want to make you think. I always want to kind of open our eyes to more than just whatever little box we're being pointed at today. I, I hope now you'll start looking at these things and start asking the question, not just is a right being violated, 
but what rights are being violated? How? And we can discuss them and we can share them. And hopefully you'll come back to the Constitution study. You'll head to the website. You'll see what's going on. You'll participate. You'll share. Share this video. Share the audio. Share the web articles I post. Help other people to understand there's more to life than whatever the government and the media point you to. That your rights are valuable and they are worth protecting, even if it means a little extra work for you day to day. Again, enjoy the website, sign up for the mailing list, and share the videos, and most important, come back here next time. We'll ponder some other topic on the Constitution Strike. Every day.